Hello, Guido here from blockbuilders.net and today I want to show you how Bitpanda Pro works. As the name already suggests, Bitpanda Pro is basically the more professional platform from Bitpanda where you can trade cryptocurrencies. And it's a bit more complicated, but the reason why a lot of people are doing that is because you can actually save on fees. So if you trade cryptocurrencies on Bitpanda, they basically charge you 1.49% per trade. And on Bitpanda Pro, it's um, either 0.15% for a maker fee or 0.25% for a taker fee. And the difference about that um, is what I will explain in a minute or so. So first of all, if you don't have a Bitpanda account, um, you can use the link down in the description to sign up. And once you have a Bitpanda account, you can actually use that account to um, log in to Bitpanda Pro as well. You basically go to exchange.bitpanda.com and then it basically um, gives you the option to log in and then you just use your Bitpanda credentials and you basically are logging into Bitpanda Pro. And the first thing we need to do then is we need to deposit some money. And here it's important to know that they basically are using the same backend. So Bitpanda and Bitpanda Pro are using the same backend. It's similar to Coinbase and Coinbase Pro that we had in the past. Um, it's basically the same architecture in the back. So you can easily um, send money from one platform to the other. Um, it's actually free and it goes in an instant. So it's there immediately. So let's say we want to deposit some euros. We can either do a bank transfer, so a SEPA transfer, or um, we can send money from Bitpanda there. So let's say we want to send 100 euros to the platform. We just click on deposit now and it will be there immediately, as you can see here. And they didn't charge us anything. If you want to send it back, it's basically the same. You just select it. Um, like you can send it back or you can do a bank transfer to your bank account and then uh, specify how much you want to send back and you click on withdraw and it automatically sends it back to Bitpanda. And that's basically it. And then you can select your trading pair here. Let's say we want to trade Bitcoin against euros. Then you have the order book here in red all the sell orders in green all the buy orders. And then you have the price chart here. So with the current price. And of course, one candle is four hours here right now. You can change that, for example, to one hour. And then you can see the price here. And here you can see the last trades. And here you have basically a visualization of the order book. And if you want to buy or sell something, you just click buy, for example. And then you have the option to either do a market or a limit order. A market order is pretty straightforward. You just specify how much you want to invest. Let's say we want to invest 100 euros. You just click on 100% here and then you click on buy BTC and then you are basically buying BTC to the best price available on the market for 100 euros and it automatically gives you the BTC in an instant. And that's it. Selling with a market order would basically the same. You just specify how much you want to sell click sell BTC and it will automatically sell to the best price available. A limit order is a bit more complicated and you basically specify how much you want to invest and then you can also specify a limit price. So the Bitcoin price right now is at 23,000 um, euros. So you can say, okay, if the price drops to 20,000 euros, You want to buy Bitcoin and then you just click buy BTC and then you can see we have the order now in the order book and it basically stays here until the price drops to 20,000 euros. And if it never drops to that price, the order will stay there forever. However, you can cancel it anytime if you click here on the X and then it automatically cancels it. And for selling, it would be the same. If you have Bitcoin, you can say, okay, you want to sell if the price, for example, goes up to 25,000 euros. Then you can sell your Bitcoin, specify how much you want to sell, and then um, put the order in the order book and it stays there until the price is reached. 
it's usually better to use a limit order if you want to buy something than a market order, especially when you're buying um, bigger amounts of a certain cryptocurrency. I will give you an example with IOTA. So if we go to the one hour chart, you can see here on that day, there was a huge spike in price um, from 16 cents to 22 cents. And it probably just lasted one hour and then the price to uh, so less than that, probably just a few seconds. And then the price dropped back. And the reason for that is um, basically a huge market order. So someone um, bought with a lot of viewers IOTA and the price spiked here and then went back off immediately. And in order to avoid that, you're basically saying, okay, you want to um, buy IOTA and then you look at the current price and then you can either use the current price or even a higher price. And then you're basically making sure that you are not paying more than your selected limit price here. And um, so that um, is basically a mechanism to avoid these price spikes here and the guy who bought IOTA here and um, basically paid a huge premium and um, could have had the IOTA way cheaper if he would have used a limit order. So always um, use limit orders and think about the price before um, you do something here. So we also said there's a difference between maker and taker fee and you are basically paying 0.25% taker fee if you do it a market order. So a market order, as I said, um, is basically an order that gets filled immediately to the best price available. And it basically takes liquidity away from the platform. So that's why you are taking it. That's why you are paying a higher taker fee of 0.25%. And if you do a limit order that gets written into the order book and it stays there for a few seconds, and then you're paying the maker fee and the maker fee is only 0.25%. One five percent, and that's basically the lower fee because you are actually providing liquidity to the platform. And so that's basically it about Bitpanda Pro. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to use the comments down below. If you find that video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you don't have an account yet, feel free to use the link down below to sign up. Thanks for watching.